everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. Hey, I wanted to show you guys what I learned how to do to use the stipple, all over stipple ability of the Brother Luminaire to stipple a quilting project that has applique on it and how to not stipple over the applique. This method also applies to the Baby Lock Solaris and the IQ design. So if I say design center for the Brother Luminaire, then I also mean IQ design for the uh, Baby Lock Solaris. The trick to doing this is to understand how these machines think. And there's a basic process in order to be able to do this and the first thing you're going to do is scan in your, whether it's a quilt block, could be a quilt itself. You don't have to have stabilizer for this. When I did this process, I used a fusible batting and put it on the back of the, of the block because I had the block all done with the purple and the orange and the background of the center square and the applique was already done and I put the fabric on top of fusible fleece and adhered it to the fusible fleece. But the fleece is actually a little bit larger than what you would want your square to be because the fleece needs to be hooped. You're gonna use fusible fleece as stabilizer. You can actually do this process using a backing fabric and hoop the backing fabric as if you were hooping stabilizer. So just it's a different mindset of thinking about how you would do embroidery, but you're not necessarily using stabilizer. If you want to use stabilizer, you can use a poly mesh, a non-fusible poly mesh. And in fact, in this particular video I'm about to show you, I did use a strip of it because I didn't have enough fusible fleece to be able to get it inside the edges of the hoop so I could have it nice and taut for the stitching. The machine has the ability to scan, and the, the, the Brother Dreamweaver, the Dream Series, the Quattros, they've all had kind of a scanning ability in them. But this one has a scanning mat. You will not use the scanning mat, you will use a regular embroidery hoop. And when you hit the scan button, and I'll show you where all that is, when you hit the scan button, not the camera, we're talking about the scan in Design Center, the machine doesn't care that you're not using the scanning mat. It, it doesn't care. It's going to scan anyway. And that's where it's going to take in the picture of the applique and your block. You need to make sure that your block can be seen on your screen. The entire area you want to stipple is not off the edge of the screen that you're looking at. And I'll show you, I actually tried to hoop an entire half of this, uh, this particular project and it was too tall and I ended up having to rehoop. and I did this in quarters is how I did it. I did the front and I did the back. I will get up close where you can see, actually this one you can see the, you can see the stippling much better on the back of this one. This was all done using the self stippling function around the applique in the Brother Luminaire. Once you get your project scanned in, then you need to tell the machine the area that you want stippled. And you do that by choosing a shape. I will show you where all these buttons are. It's very simple to do. But then you can resize your shape in order to make one quarter or maybe just a little piece, however you want to do it. Once you have your shape set, then you fill the shape using the paint bucket tool with the stipple stitches. Then you go in and you erase everywhere that you do not want the machine to stitch. You get that done. Instead of telling, you've told the machine where you want it to stitch when you filled the bucket, then you have to take an eraser and you will erase where you don't want the machine to stitch. And that's how you get so precise so that it will go all the way around your applique without actually stitching on it. See that? It's a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. 
once you set that, you've got everything erased and you hit set, that is when you will resize your stippling to the size that you want it to be that's appropriate for your project, whatever you choose. And then you jump from the design center into embroidery mode. And it's kind of important to remember that design center is, is more of, of a digitizing and a drawing mode than actual embroidery. You're, the, the machine has sewing, it has embroidery, and we all understand the difference between sewing and embroidery because there's hoops for embroidery and everything is much different and there's a different arm and all of that. When, when you are playing with Design Center or IQ Design, it's, it's kind of, it's not intuitive for us to just instantly realize Design Center is not an embroidery mode. Design Center is a designing mode or a digitizing mode. And there are certain different buttons in it and depending on which ones you choose is how you will do your digitizing. So I'm going to show you how to digitize stippling it's as simple as a press of a button and then how to go around your applique and then stitch out your project. Let's get to it and I'll show you how. That I've made up that's going to be a little Halloween tote bag. And this is from Pat Sloan's new book, uh, Holiday Celebrations. And I want to use the Brother Luminaire Design Center to stipple around all around the ghost and her little bow and not get any of the stippling on the ghost. And so what I have found to do that, uh, this is backed by fusible fleece, I actually kind of pieced it, I had two pieces. And I have used some parchment paper to really secure the ends, the edges to the fusible fleece to make sure that the edges are downed uh, tightly. You don't want any loose edges so that the foot can't get up underneath. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and hoop this and I'm going to use 10 by 16 hoop just because of the size of this project. And essentially, I'm going to use the fusible fleece as stabilizer, if you will, to hoop it. If you don't do a project that uses fusible fleece, then you can certainly just use like a no-show poly mesh, a non-fusible. I mean, your stabilizer totally depends on uh, the project that you're doing. So I want to do about half of this. And I don't want to do... All of, I mean, it won't all fit in the hoop at one time, so I'm going to have to do a split hooping, and I'm going to do it side by side like this. I'm going to use an extra piece of some mesh just to give me enough stabilizer. I'm just going to do this like this. And if this stitches onto the back of it a little bit, that's no big deal. That That is perfectly fine. I'm going to trim it all the way right here, and if there's a little bit of poly mesh on the back, no big deal. So it's not going to be seen anyway. It's going inside of a tote. I want to get this fairly straight. So that now I'm going to I'm going to do stippling on this part right here. Matter of fact, I can do a lot more. Hold on. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place, you guys. This is just how I think. I'm going to do most of this bag. You want to make sure you've got enough the base of the hoop, the top of the hoop, and the sides of the hoop so that it will all fit. And it's fairly straight. That looks real good. When I set this up, I'm going to make sure the stippling design does not go outside of this right here. And you also need to make sure that your design is not so close to the top or to the bottom that it wouldn't stitch there either. So now I'm ready to go to the machine. So now I'm going to go into My Design Center. My Design Center is a different module from embroidery. So you have embroidery is different from sewing. My Design Center is different from embroidery. This is where we are digitizing. This is not an embroidery module. You kind of think that it is 
and they work hand in hand, but they are not the same. So I'm going to touch my design center. And the first thing I need to do is tell it what size canvas I'm working with. If you're in embroidery, it knows the hoop you're on based on when you put the hoop in. But in my design center, you definitely want to make sure on page eight. And anytime I say my design center, I also mean IQ design for baby lock. You want to make sure you have told it what frame size you're using and tell it okay. If you come across a situation where it says you need to change to a larger hoop and you know for a fact you do not need to do that, double check that and see if that might be a problem. So the first thing I need to do is take a picture of what it is I want to stitch on. So there is a scanning button right here, that little leaf. I'm going to go to image scan. You have image scan, line design, illustration design. I'm going to go to image scan and scan. Now ideally you're supposed to use, and you saw the picture there on the screen, you should use the scanning mat that came with your machine. But the machine doesn't care whether you're using the scanning mat or a regular embroidery hoop. As you can tell, it's working. All right, it's recognizing now. So can you see how this image, let me make it a little bit darker. You've got light and dark up here. I'm gonna hit darker and you can see how the top of the fabric, I can't see it. That's, uh, I can barely tell right there that I can see the top. I could make it that big, but I think I'm gonna rehoop this and shift it just a little bit I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to actually end up having to do this in quarters as opposed to half and half. And that's okay. All right. I'm going to cancel and exit Design Center just because I want to rescan. Hit my scanning button, image scan, scan. Okay. All right. I've got this scan now. Now I need to tell it what area I want to scan. And to do that, you choose the shapes button. And I'm gonna choose a square. Okay. And you can see the square has put itself, let me go a little darker and it might be a little bit easier to see. And you can go to size now, larger. That's about right like that. And I'm gonna set the square just on the outside of the fabric edges. And I'm gonna go a little bit taller. And move it up. So that's good. Right there is fine. And I'm just gonna stipple that particular quadrant of my front, my little top here, and I'm gonna tell it okay. And now I need to choose a design. So I'm gonna go in on this uh, where it's red, it defaults to red with lines. Touch that and the second button is stipple. That will give you a single pass. If you choose one of these designs in here on this one, you'll get two or three passes of the thread. I don't know why it does that, I wish it didn't. So we determined the box area and we've determined the design. Now I need to hit the paint bucket. This paint bucket up here and all of these, these five icons, one, two, three, four, five, those are for drawing. We're not drawing. Here is where we're filling. This is a fill. So I've chosen the paint bucket. I'm just gonna touch the inside of my square and it fills it with stipple. Right now that stipple is too dense, but don't worry about that. What I wanna do now is get rid of the stipple that I don't want to stitch. And you're gonna go back and forth quite a bit between the hand, the percentage on the magnification, and the eraser. So I'm gonna to go to the magnification to 200, grab my hand and move it down. I'm just gonna start at the top and work my way down. Now I'm gonna to touch my eraser and I actually like the square when I'm doing this kind of, of technique. I'm gonna make it a lot bigger. 
maybe up to 33. And then I'm just going to, kind of like a puzzle, I'm going to go around the edges first and do the edges and then I'll get a really big brush and clean out all of the middle. So I'm just going to start here. We're not doing any of this, but let me go around the ghost. And it's not a bad idea to stop occasionally and go and do it again because if I were to do an undo, if I make a mistake, I don't want to undo everything else I did that was good. So a lot of times it's good to just stop and then start again. Just going to go around the edges like this. And let it know that I'm going to stop. Great. So I've gone around pretty much all of the outside of the ghost. I'm going to get a little bit bigger. I'm going to go to 400. Take my hand. I want to make sure I got that stippling off. I don't want it to get on my blanket stitch of my little ghost. I like this. Okay, this looks good. Now I'm going to go back to about 200. I'm going to go to my eraser. I'm going to make it very big. And then this is just easy work like this. Once you've done all of the edges, it's really easy. If you make a mistake, you can hit this arrow down here for undo. So the trick here is you scan it in, scan in your project, and make sure that you can see all edges of your project on the screen. And if you have to do it in several different uh, screenings, that's okay, scannings. That looks really good. I'm gonna go lighter, and I am looking for any stippling at all in my ghost, and I don't, oh, there's some right there. Yeah, sometimes if it's lighter, oh, see there's some right there. You can see it much better. That looks great. So now I know that all of that is done. So now it's not going to stipple there. I'm gonna tell it okay. And I'm all done with this kind of editing. Let me go back to 100% just so you can kind of get a better feel for what we're doing. And I'm gonna hit next and it's digitizing in the stippling. And then this second button right here where it says dot 2.0, touch that and I'm gonna bring it up to six because that's the way I did the, whoop, way too big. It kind of jumps quick. That's the way I did the back right there. Now I'm gonna tell it okay. And it is re-digitizing the distance there. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. And when I touch set, now we're jumping out of the design center or IQ design mode and we're getting ready to go into embroidery. And I'm going to tell it okay. That is my backing to get rid of that image. I'm going to go into my settings and go up to page 10. And right here it says background image. I'm gonna hit delete, tell it okay. And okay, there we go, that looks good. I'm gonna go into embroidery. Now, in this screen, there's two different stitches that happen. The first one is just your stippling and that's gonna take two minutes. The second one is a, um, a big, heavy stitch. This is gonna take five minutes. It's almost like a satin stitch. I don't know what kind of stitch it is, but I'm not using it, so I will not use that stitch. When it stops, I will be done and I'll rehoop it into another quadrant. So I'm going to tell it embroidery and it's ready to go. So I have a purple thread in here. It's going to take two minutes for this stitch and we're ready to go. It's perfect.
see how it's just going over the edge and it's not getting caught because I adhered the edge of the fabric to that fusible fleece. This thread is the new Increta thread from Sweet Pea Embroidery. I like it. It's part of the Brights collection. I've been using it now for several days, all different colors, and I really like it. See how it's just missing the ghost. That is perfect. Exactly what I want. This is so much fun that when it comes out just like this. Okay, now I'm gonna re-hoop this and get another quadrant ready for embroidery. Now I'm gonna go through the same thing again. We're gonna start with a scan. I'm gonna tell it okay, return. I'm gonna go back to home, exit my design center, scan the image. I'm gonna go a little bit darker. You can see where the old, where the previous stitching stopped. When I get good, I'll figure out how to close up those ends. I'm not that good yet. So I need to tell it again where I want it to stitch. I'm going to choose a square and okay. And now I want to size it. Actually, I'm gonna move it up. So like right here, so it's a little tall. I'm gonna make it more narrow. Just off the edge on the right and just over the edge at the top. And I have not touched the, I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit. I wanna get it above the edge of the previous stitching because I don't want it to cross over. Great. And now I'm going to extend it and make it a rectangle. And doing this prevents any kind of patterned gaps, if that makes any sense. So you don't end up with a patterned gap in the middle of what you're doing. I'm going to make it just a little bit more narrow, top to bottom, and then I'm going to move it up. Right like that. That's real good. So by patterned gap, I mean, if I was to put another square, so here is the end where it stopped. If I was to put another box right here and not extend as a rectangle this way and only did this box, you might end up with like a gap between this design and this design because you're gonna have to stitch this eventually. Well, I don't need to do that. So I'm gonna tell it, okay, I'm happy with that. And now we have that, I need to choose the stipple. Tell it okay. I'm gonna choose the paint bucket and dump it in the square or in the rectangle. And now I need to erase it. I'm gonna make it bigger. Get my hand. I just need to get it out of the bow right there, okay? And erase my square, make it bigger. That's it. That's all I needed to do for that one. I'm going to tell it okay. And next. And now I want to set the size again to 6.0 or 0 0.60. Whoop. Boy, it just flies. <laughs> Perp, whoop. There we go. Tell it okay. It's going to redigitize that. That looks good. That looks real good. Okay, I'm gonna tell it set. We're leaving Design Center, jumping into embroidery. I'm gonna tell it okay, or embroidery, and it's ready to go.
Okay, I'm gonna do this two more times and finish the bag. Here's the last little bit. All right, this is finished and I'm ready to put my bag together now. Very, very happy with how this turned out. So here it is all finished. Look at that. Didn't that come out great? The back of it has a little bit of the no-show mesh right here that happened to get on the back because I needed some more stabilizer in order to fit in the hoop. But you really can't feel the difference because that poly mesh is such a lightweight uh, stabilizer. This looks great. Now if I was really, really concerned, I would take my sewing machine and um, kind of loop around and do it manually to meet these two ends. Oh. To, meet these, to meet these two ends right here. I'm not that concerned about it. I don't think whatever child drags this around to trunk or treat is really gonna care. <laughs> and I know I don't. <laughs> So I hope this was helpful and I encourage you to even just make up a sample and take a Sharpie and draw a design on like a white piece of fabric and pretend that's your applique and then run it through the process and test it and see it, how it works and play with it. And I think you're going to find that it's a lot of fun and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up. That helps my channel a lot. And we'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.